This is going to be called Jesus Christ is Coming to Town. Look at Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. This is about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how come people never speak a word about bringing the king back? That is what the revelation of Jesus Christ is. It is Jesus Christ coming down. It says, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. You say, well, that's a long time from now, but it'll be here before you know it. Just as how it feels like Christmas was just a few months ago, yet here it is again. You can think about a Christmas five years ago. It doesn't seem that long ago. It, it'll be here before you know it. Next Christmas, I'll be here before you know it. If the Lord doesn't come back, it's going to shortly come to pass. Mark it down. His coming will be here before you know it. The rapture will be here before you know it. For the, where he's going to take out all the saints. Then you got the tribulation and then the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after the tribulation time period. Mark it down. His coming will shortly come to pass. Then same chapter, Revelation 1, 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You know, he's called the faithful witness. You know, every kid counts on Santa showing up every year, whether there's snow, whether there's a storm, whether there's a tsunami, a tornado, or the parents are just broke, or... Maybe the kids acted like pure evil all year. He still expects Santa's coming. They believe Santa is faithful. Well, Jesus Christ is the real faithful witness. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, the Lord says. And I want to point out some ways the idea of Santa Claus coming to town is just a knockoff of Jesus Christ coming to town. Everything goes back to the Bible. Look at how some of the characteristics of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will match characteristics that people have given to Santa Claus over the years. Revelation 1, 14 and 15. We'll start there. <clears throat> Both have head and hair, white like wool. Revelation 1, 14. Speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ and His glorified body, His head and His hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and His eyes were as a flame of fire. So both have a head and a hair that's white like wool. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's white as snow. He represents purity. You think about the most righteous man you know, you get around him, maybe you feel intimidated by him. Maybe you feel like this guy's too holy for me to even be in the presence of. Imagine being around the Lord Jesus Christ and that's why John ended up falling at his feet as dead. And you know, Santa... They draw him with head and hair, white like wool, just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 15, Revelation chapter 1. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as a sound of many waters. The Lord Jesus Christ's feet are like fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Well, think about it. He took your hell. His soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. When he was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, you know what he did down there? He took the keys of death and hell. He walked through hell for you. And his feet are like fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. What does the Lord Jesus himself call hell? A furnace of fire. And you know what? They say about Santa Claus, where does he come down? A chimney. If there really was a Santa and he was coming down... Your chimney, he would have his feet burnt. You know, same concept there. It gets pretty uncanny. Jesus Christ will live forever. Santa 
is spoken of as living forever. Look at Revelation 1, 17 and 18. And when I saw him, this is John, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Jesus Christ will never die. He died once, voluntarily laid down his life. He'll never die again. Santa Claus is spoken of as living forever. He's given these attributes that only the, the Lord has. And only the people like us who the Lord gives us the ability to live forever. You know, my kid asked if Santa can die. Well, he can fall off a roof, can he? He can burn up in a fireplace. You know, he could crash his sleigh. You know, <clears throat> I never told my kids Santa was real. But kids, they just believe in Santa. There's just something in them that believes in Santa Claus. You can't get them to quit believing in Santa. Uh, and just like it's, you know, the Lord talks about you got to come as a little child. You got to come as a little child and believe. You know, a kid believes better than an adult. They've not been hardened through their life of sin and seen the wicked things in the world. It's easier, easier for them to believe. But Jesus Christ will live forevermore. He is eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You think about other things about Santa. Well, they say in that song, Santa is making a list and checking it twice. Going to find out who's naughty or nice? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, he knows who's naughty or nice. He knows if you've been good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Me and you, if you're saved, <clears throat> you're going to be up at the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to be judged on not whether you go to heaven or hell. That's already been decided if you're saved. You're going to be judged on your service. The things done in your body for the Lord. Is it good or bad? You know, he has a list. Are you going to get rewarded for the good things you've done or lose out because you you never done anything for the Lord. Now, you think about a lost person. They're not going to the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to the great white throne judgment. And the Lord has made a list, and he doesn't have to check it twice. He knows it. He didn't even have to make the list. He just got that for for your benefit to see. Revelation 20, 12 through 13 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Your works, the things that you've done, are written in books. And if you go to the great white throne judgment as a lost person, you're not being judged on whether you go to heaven or hell. You're being judged on whether or not... Or, or you're being judged on... How bad the lake of fire is going to be for you. You're going to be judged out of those things written in the books according to your works. He's made a list. He doesn't have to check it twice. He already knows who's naughty or nice. And you think about Santa, what's his catchphrase? Ho, ho, ho. Well, that's what the Lord says. In Zechariah 2.6, he says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. See, uh, Santa doesn't even have original thought. Hollywood doesn't have an original thought. Everything goes back to the scriptures. Santa, you think about Santa Claus this time of year, everywhere you go, you see fake Santa Clauses everywhere. Everywhere you go, here's a fake Santa. Here's a fake Santa at the mall. Here's a fake Santa at Walmart. Here's a fake Santa at the parade. Here's a fake Santa. Well, they're all fake Santas, but you know what I mean. Everywhere you go, you got fake Santas. Well, everywhere you go, you got false Christs. In Matthew 24, 24, especially for the Lord comes back in the tribulation time period, you're going to have false Christs everywhere. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive even the very elect. They shall deceive the very elect. Santa's got fake Santas everywhere. Jesus Christ has false Christs. The worst one coming in the tribulation time period, the Antichrist, is a false Christ. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4, it talks about him and it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin, which is the Antichrist, be revealed, the son of perdition, 
who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's going to sit in the temple of God. He's going to sit on a throne of lies, you could say. The Antichrist is a false Christ that isn't the real deal. He sits on a throne of lies. And you know, you think about Santa, what's he wearing? He shows up in red and white apparel. Jesus Christ, at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes in to bring in his kingdom, he's going to be in red and white apparel. Revelation nineteen thirteen, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. You look at Isaiah 63, 1 through 4. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom, the Lord Jesus Christ, with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, traveling from a long distance, you might say. It says, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Look at this. Wherefore art, art thou red? in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. It says, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. See, when Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, he's coming with a vengeance. You know, the first time he came, he died for us. He shed his blood. But the people that's going to be on earth during the time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, they've rejected him. And now he's coming to shed blood. And that blood's going to stain his raiment. In Revelation 14, 19 through 20, it says, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. So the blood's going to be so deep, it's going to go up to the horses' bridles. And you think about the colors of Christmas, red and white. You're going to have Jesus Christ coming down on a white horse and white apparel. And there's going to be so much blood, it's going to be clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Those white horses with blood up to their bridles and you're going to have the saints on white horses and the saints are going to be in white robes revelation 19 14 and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean you think about that for a minute you if you're saved in a short while this is going to shortly come to pass one of these days you're going to be on a white horse following the Lord Jesus Christ out of the third heaven and you're coming down and blood's going to be up to the horse's bridles, the blood's going to stain all your raiment. Red and white is the colors of the second coming. You think about Santa, what does he got? He's got flying reindeer. Well, the Lord's got flying white horses. Revelation 19, 11, And I saw heaven open. This is the second coming, not the rapture. This is the second coming. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. You think about Santa, he's got those flying reindeer. The Lord Jesus has those white horses. Deuteronomy thirty-three twenty-six: There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and his excellency on the sky who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. Think about that. You, People think, they're uh, young children think they're going to look up and see Santa. You ought to be looking up to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. People are looking forward to Santa coming back. You ought to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Habakkuk 3.15, Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses through the heap of great waters. 
He's coming back down on a horse through that sea of glass, through that great deep under that sea of glass, straight through the second heaven, straight through our atmosphere. Going to touch down on the ground, blood be up to the horse's bridles. You also, you think about Santa, what does he have? He's got elves that are thousands of years old. You think about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's got angels that are thousands of years old. Hebrews 12, 22 talks about an innumerable company of angels working for him. You know, kids send Santa letters with requests. We send the Lord prayers with requests. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let, let your requests be made known unto God. Santa is said to be able to see you when you're sleeping and know when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good, for, so be good for goodness sake, the song says. Well, Santa doesn't see you when you're sleeping, but I tell you, someone who does, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord never sleeps. Psalm 121.4, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He never does go to sleep. You know, a lot of times grandparents will drive me crazy when they say to the kids, you know, you better be good because Santa's watching. No, it's better to be good because Jesus Christ is watching and he never goes to sleep. And I get very, just like Elijah said, I get, I, I'm very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. I get very jealous for the Lord God of hosts when they attribute God's abilities to Santa. You know, you should be saying be good because the Lord Jesus Christ. Be good because he's watching you. Be good because he died for you. Be good because you love him and you want to please him. Not because Santa's watching. The heck with Santa. He didn't die on the cross. What is one of the first things Santa asks your kid? You know, they say he's all-knowing. What's one of the first things he asks your kid? What's your name? What's your name, little boy? What's your name, little girl? But the Lord knows your name. Psalm 147.4, he telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. You know, people can name a star. Well, they've already got a name. And if he's talking about the angels too, most likely, it, it, he knows all their names. An innumerable company of angels. He knows all the angels' names. He knows all of our names. The Lord's the only one that's omniscient. He's the only one that knows everything. Proverbs 15.3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Second Chronicles 16.9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Psalms 11.4, The Lord is in his holy temple, but the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes we hold, his eyelids try the children of men. Psalm 139, 7-8, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at once. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He's, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Santa has many names. Many names that he goes by. Jesus Christ has many names that he goes by. You think about Santa Claus. What's some other stuff he goes by? Center Claus. Short version of St. Nick. So he goes by St. Nick as well. Chris Kringle which actually means little Christ child. Chris Kringle does. And you think about the Lord, Isaiah 9, 6, unto us a child is born. He's the Christ child. Uh, Santa goes by Pierre Noel, Father Christmas. Well, what's Jesus referred to as? Everlasting Father. There are 124 names for Santa worldwide. I, I looked that up. But G And Jesus Christ has a name for every letter of the alphabet. Think about it. A, Alpha and Omega. And you could just keep going on from there. So many different names. B, the branch. He's the righteous branch in the scriptures. C, Christ. It'll go on and on. In some places, people say Santa has an evil counterpart that even sometimes travels with him. Krampus. And he's like a and the description you get for Krampus is like, he's got hooves, 
and horns, kind of like the devil. Uh, he kind of like the representation of the devil. So Jesus also has a polar opposite, the devil. So that's a copycat there. When Santa shows up at your house, what does he kind of do? He enters in like a thief. He climbs up on the houses. Do you think about that? Well, when we come back at the second coming, the Lord's going to enter in like a thief. In Joel 2, 9, it says, They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up on the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. How about that? They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 and 3, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You know, they have they have these low-budget Christmas movies, and I, I seen the cover of one back in the day called Santa's Slay. Slay as in S-L-A-Y. And I guess Santa's just going through massacring people. And I guess that matches the second coming more than just the regular Santa, because when Jesus Christ comes back, He's coming in flaming fire taking vengeance. And he's setting up his kingdom where there's going to be peace. He's the prince of peace. And to bring in peace, you got to get rid of those people that don't want peace. They are out for themselves. They want evil. You know, there was another one called Violent Night. Instead of Silent Night, I seen an ad for Violent Night. Well, the second coming is going to be a violent night. But it's a righteous war. In righteousness, he's going to judge and make war. You think about Santa, where they say he's from, the North Pole. Well, God, he's in the north. In Psalm 48, 2, it says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. In Isaiah 14, where did the devil want to exalt his throne above? He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Revelation 4, 6. It says, and before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, like a bed of ice. Kind of reminds you of the North Pole up there in the north. Santa comes at an unknown hour. Jesus Christ comes at an unknown hour. Matthew 24, 26. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Parents warn you not to be acting bad around both of their comings. 1 John two twenty eight, And now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You don't want to be ashamed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what do parents say? You better be good because Santa's coming. Psalm 34, 11 says, Come, ye children, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. But what are they trying to teach them now mostly? It seems like the fear of Santa. Fear because Santa's not going to give you gifts. And that's another thing. They both give gifts. The Lord Jesus Christ, in Matthew twenty one twenty two, he said, In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Psalm 37, 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Matthew 7, 7 through 8, and verse 11, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? James 1.17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And the Lord Jesus Christ gave you the greatest gift that you could ever receive. Romans, Paul calls it in Romans, a free gift. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He died. He was buried and resurrected. All you got to do is come to him as a guilty sinner and receive the gift. Bow your head right now and tell him you want to receive the gift and he'll give it to you. No strings attached. Not by living good. It's not about living good. It's not about you doing anything. It's a gift. Just like 
when you were a kid, most likely you didn't des even deserve the gifts, but you still got them anyway. You were probably on the naughty list, but you got it anyway. Well, you're on the naughty list. Every person's on the naughty list. Everybody's sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God's offering you this free gift anyway. You just got to take it. The easiest way to do that, the only way to do that is come to him as a guilty sinner and believe. The night I got saved, I said, I want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, God, I'm believing on you. Please save me. And he gave me the gift. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.